So, welcome from my side. Quick introduction. My name is Stefan Meyerhofer. I'm a regional VP for Fosspoint, running uh, Central Europe, Eastern Europe, and Northern Europe. And um, yeah, what I like to do is to uh, start a journey together with you, really to uh, how we could redefine cybersecurity. I think uh, it is a, a good point in time. We have to do it. And first point is somewhat disrupting, as I remember Palo Alto was a couple of years ago when they entered the next-gen firewall space. It is really the same. They redefined the space, and we are going to do the same in cybersecurity. You will see. And um, when we see the world is changing dramatically, and you all know these buzzwords like IoT, like cloud, like uh, industrial 2.0, 4.0, 5.0. .0. You heard uh, blockchain and others, and I mean, we are all on a, or in a digital transformation because of this. And uh, nobody is almost able to avoid this. It is on the private side and it is on the business side. We are in it. And as a company, I think you have to be really clear how you define the goal of your journey of your digital transformation. The bad thing is that this is a moving target. It is changing constantly. So it is really demanding that you rethink it, that you accelerate your efforts, and you know where you are going. That is imperative in my point of view. The second thing is that the old world, you can see it in the, in the yellow bubble there, is, is over. You know, this is showing an environment very, which is very controllable. You remember these days where we had van networks, where we had controlled access point to the network, where we had a controlled crowd of users. This has changed. We are now completely on the internet, and your customers are there, your partners are there, your users have become incredibly mobile and flexible, and the number of access points to your network has increased dramatically. You are almost not able anymore to control them. They are everywhere around the clock on the world. And in addition, we start now to move applications and data into cloud services in environments which we are not able to control anymore. Somebody else is controlling them. And you have lost the few where your data is. It is either stored in clouds, it is stored at your customers, your partners, or at your smart devices of your users all around the world. And I mean, if you think a moment what GDPR means, GDPR means you need to have control of your data. You have to make sure that you know where your data resides. And I mean, there's a simple use case for GDPR I get a lot confronted with. It is the right to be forgotten. Does anybody know what that is? It is simple. If an employee leaves your company, he can demand to ask you to delete all data which is related to his person. Now think you are using OS 365. You are using SharePoint. The data may, might be stored on smart devices somewhere, and you have to prove that you delete all data. If you are not doing it, and it becomes obvious, you know the fees and fines which could be put on you because of GDPR. And I have customers, huge ones, in the chemical industry, for instance, they have 1,500 employees leaving a month. So that is a big problem for them, right? And if we keep on going here, I mean, the approach we are 
doing security has not really changed. The first thing I want to focus on is, are you sure that the way you do security is able to cope with this rapid digital transformation, with this rapid change of requirements? Second piece is, we have already talked about it, are you still in control of your data, how to get it? I mean, what can you do? And thirdly, I mean, it is the old question between imposing security and not hindering the people to do their job. It is a constant tension you are in between. If you have too rigorous security policies in place, it could happen that they are hindering your people, your flexible people, doing their job based on the changing requirements they are in. So that is a little bit the battlefield we are in right now. So what are CISOs or people doing when I'm visiting them? So first of all, they are adding more solutions to cover that. And I see companies having 50 to 70 security solutions in place on average. 50 to 70. And all these solutions are not integrated. I don't think that is the right way to approach it. I mean, every day a new solution is coming up. You heard blockchain. And you heard that the key thing is your private or your individual identification key. I bet and I promise that somebody will manage to steal it and get into your blockchain applications with the stolen identity. How do you become aware of this? How do you get control of this? Any idea? That is the real challenge, in my point of view, we are confronted with. And the old security solutions we have in place are more or less threat-centric. So they, they try to block threats firsthand. And you all know that the development pace of new threats is incredible. So it's, it reminds me a little bit on the catch-me-if-you-can type of game. And uh, normally you don't win this. And that brings me back to what I have said. It is inevitable that breaches are going to happen. They will happen. That is a fact. And on top of that, I mean, if you use or if you have data at your suppliers, customers, or in clouds, I don't know if it's a good um, approach to rely that these people are really doing proper security. And normally, if you talk to an OS365 provider in terms of how they are maintaining your GDPR compliance, you get a big question mark. It's coming back to you. You have to do it. And you have to provide it. The cloud provider is not doing this. You see, the common approach is to define events at a given point in time in either good or bad, and to create a policy to block them. You know all these signature type of things, which is around for a long time. The problem is, and you see this bell curve, that a lot of events and actions are happening in between, good or bad. And depending, you know, how the environment is and the, the context of the event is, it is changing from good to bad or bad to good. It is not able or it's not good to define it very strictly. I give you an example of what I mean. I was watching, I think last week or two weeks ago, the Oscar nomination. And honestly, I didn't know any of the movies they had brought up. I didn't know any of them. 
what they do is they show you 10, 15 seconds of the movie and you have to get the full picture why this is the movie deserving an Oscar, right? It is almost impossible. Why? Because to be able to do that, you need the full movie. You need the full context of the thing. Otherwise, you are not able to make the right judgment. That is what I mean. It is a, a lack of context which is preventing us making the right decision at a given point in time. We at Force Point, we change this concept. We are focusing a lot now on a human-centric approach. And that means we try, uh, we give you the context for events and alerts. How are we doing this? We're doing this because we put the human being, the user, in the middle of our cybersecurity strategy. It is giving you the full picture at a given point in time what a user is doing and how he is interacting with your most critical data. And we are giving a risk score to that event. And we are revisiting this event continuously and adapting the risk score of that event. So that is giving you then the full context of, um, of an event, of an action, which is taking place. Why is the, the human being, the, the user, so important to be in the middle of your cyber security strategy? First of all, um, as we have seen before, I mean, the access points to your network are increasing and are, I would say, are not really controllable anymore. And it is really impossible to block all threats which are coming up. I mean, uh, the presenter from before, they are famous in detecting unknown threats and converting them into known ones to create new sig signatures. So they are constantly rising the bars to get over and to get into your system and to prevent these kind of threats and new threats which are coming up. It is the catch me if you can, if you remember that. But the fastest growing problem is not malware. It is not new threats. It is human behavior. It is that people are stealing credentials. So you have suddenly two users on your network completely identical and not an I don't know any access control or authorization system which is able to detect this if somebody has granted access with an identity. It's not possible as we speak, right? Hackers are increasingly investing time to convert good users into bad users. You can say they are hijacking users. And here comes into play, I mean, I said that everybody is in the middle of a digital transformation, private and business-wise. And you know what hackers can do if they are following people with their activities in social networks. They can really spy them and put them into let's say, problematic situations to get hold of their credentials. That is what they are going for. Or, if a malware is coming in, they are hijacking the device and getting the credentials. You all know that. And I mean, a simple form of that is if something happens and the ransomware is encrypting your PC and you have to pay something. I mean, that is the low key of a threat in my point of view. It is not really that harmful, right? The problem is, if somebody is hijacking an identity and able to exfiltrate data out of your network, that is the key problem. We have a recent case of that in Germany. 
So the, the network of the German government had been hacked. And they know it for a couple of months already. But till today, nobody can tell you what data has been exfiltrated. They don't know it. And they are struggling to identify the users which had been affected by that. And, of course, they don't know who is behind it. It is speculative. But that shows you a little problem. And another angle is, I mean, the world we are acting in as a user is getting more and more complex. And I think it is almost impossible to avoid mistakes. So that is another threat vector which is coming up, that users are unintentionally are making mistakes. A simple one is if you send an email and the automatic email thing is bringing in an email addressee you don't want to have in it, and you don't notice it, and you send out the email. Damage done, period. You all know that. That is a very simple case of that. So what companies should do, they should have a, a safety network for their employees. I, I see that. Thank you for that. But I think I will ask for a couple of more minutes because I started later. Okay? <laughs> so the vision of, of Force Point is, of the human-centric cybersecurity approach we are going is, really to understand the rhythm of your people. That means, what are they doing, with what data are they interfering, and, you know, what is around them. And the second piece of this is we, we want to control the flow of your data. So we are able to provide you exact information and policies to control the flow of your data, even into clouds, and to maintain control. If you put these two pieces together, you get a, a, a new access, a new picture, what is going on. So that is a picture of the human point system we have put together. And you see, we did it very much on purpose. And Force Point is in the market since 2016. So we are a brand new company. And the advantage of that is, we have not a lot of heritated systems we have to put together. So what we did, we built a system on purpose with different components. And the good thing is, all the components are now really tightly integrated. They are available. They are here. This is reality right now. The second piece is, each of the components was carefully selected. It is, let's say, some kind of best-of-class product we have put into the system. I give you one or two examples. If you look at the DLP piece we're having, for nine years it is rated number one DLP system by Gartner. For nine years in a row. And I can only give you some appetizer if you go on our DLP, and that is now, meanwhile, integrated into Mail, Web, the Firewall, and Caspi. So you have one DLP approach for the whole stack of solution. And to get GDPR compliant, I think one of the major things is quick and good discovery. Look at our system. It is giving you really top-notch discovery capabilities to build your GDPR compliance. And we have really hundreds of predefined GDPR policies in the system you can take advantage of. So that is a little, little piece of that. Another one is maybe the next-gen firewall. It is now for two years rated by NSS Lab. Oh, it's even getting more beautiful. <laughs> I keep on going. Let's see what is coming next. <laughs> so, NS, NS Lab, so let's come back to the, to the reality, has rated our firewall for two years now as the most secure firewall. But this is not solving the problem because we might be able, and we can show it to you, that we are able maybe to block 
and to detect with AMD maybe 80% of the threats out there, maybe 70%. Threats are coming through. Let's, let's go back to that. And the good thing is, you can start with any point of the system. And you need not to deploy the whole system. We are able, and we have a lot of focus, when you take one solution from us, like, let's say, DLP, that we are really able to integrate that into your existing system and to improve it. Of course, the more components you put together from us, the better it gets. I mean, that is the little marketing ad I'm doing here. So we accelerate now a little bit. What, what I'm showing here is a majority core curve from Gartner. It is showing, you know, what they call risk adaptive security. And it is showing the way you can get there. And that is what we have been talking about with the human behavior centric approach. It is a risk adaptive cybersecurity system which is learning and improving as we speak. And now you can make a judgment for yourself. Where are you here? I mean, I see a lot of customers in the left corner with using a lot of threat-centric systems, like firewalls, um, secure web gateways. It is improving. We are seeing now more data-centric and application-centric systems, like DLP, CASB, or a next-gen firewall. And the new thing is coming up, it is user entity behavior analytics. And that is giving you now the next step to a risk adaptive system, which we are bringing in. And this is the way we can accompany you on your way to a risk adaptive system, which is in our point of view, the only way to have successful cybersecurity implemented, which is keeping up pace with the changing environment we are in. So, thank you for the attention, and uh, I'm around for questions, if they may come up, and uh, I'm looking forward to that, and thank you for your attention again. Thank you. <laughs>